part three of the Water 7 Arc Review, episodes 243 to 248. The mysterious masked CP9 guys have beaten Luchi and Kaku into unconsciousness. Tylston tries to attack, but the masked guy is too strong. Iceberg and Robin, meanwhile, are having a chat inside. Did you know that deciphering the Poneglyphs is a crime? The thing CP9 is trying to acquire is the blueprints to the ancient weapon Pluton, which apparently only Robin can decipher. Meanwhile, Polly has been beaten to a bloody pulp. Enter Luffy! Then Polly reveals that the plans are a fake, and they restrain both Polly and Luffy and leave. Polly and Luffy vow to each other that they will kill the masked people and rescue Iceberg. But as it turns out, the masked CP9 people are actually Luchi, Kaku, Khalifa, and Bruno from the bar! Play the clip. Does that mean that the good guys are really the bad guys? Considering Luchi's strength and Kaku's speed and Polly's ropes, I mean, I feel like they wouldn't have these defining attributes unless they ended up fighting. They are a secret part of the government that doesn't exist, and they have a license to kill. They figure out that another disciple of Tom is actually still alive. Cuddy Flam supposedly died in an accident eight years ago, but he's actually Frankie! Quit blowing my mind, One Piece! They figure out that Frankie must have the plans for Pluton, and they're just about to kill Iceberg when Zoro and Luffy jump in from opposite walls. Polly, Nami, and Chopper are there too. Polly sees his old buddies, then he puts two and two together, and he has an existential crisis! CP9 members have transcended human abilities with Rokushiki, which means they're super strong, super fast, and their pokes hurt super bad. As Robin escapes, Luchi also reveals that he ate the Neko Neko fruit model Leopard. Then Polly is defeated, and Luffy is defeated and thrown out the window, and Zoro is defeated and thrown out the window, and Nami is defeated and thrown out the window, and a building falls on Chopper. CP9 ties up Iceberg and Polly to die in the fire and escape. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Frankie and Usopp are becoming friends. Frankie insists that the Going Merry is no longer a ship because it can't carry people from shore to shore, so it should be dismantled. But Usopp already knew that! Remember the mysterious person who fixed the Going Merry in the Skypea arc? It was, get ready for it, the human incarnation of the Going Merry that appeared in human form that happens occasionally when a crew and a ship have mutual love and respect for each other. What did I just say about blowing my mind, One Piece? Then CP9 crashes the adorable little party and starts a fight. They break into a closed off area, finding the old workshop of Tom's workers, Iceberg, Cuddy Flam, and Tom. Cue the dramatic flashback. It takes place 20 years ago, following the execution of Goldie Roger. Frankie is like 10-ish, and Iceberg is like 18-ish, and Yokozuna the Frog is small, and Kokoro is relatively less hideous. And Tom is a super strong merman who made Goldie Roger's ship. Turns out the government doesn't particularly like that, so Tom is arrested and sentenced to death. But I'm making a sea train! A what? A sea train. It will bring prosperity back to Water 7. How long will it take you to make that? Eh, ten years. Okay, you have ten years, but if you fail, we'll kill you. Okay! Tom's workers have a montage! Little by little, failure by failure, the sea train is constructed. We did it! Prosperity back to Water 7! And baby Polly is so cute! All in all, these past six episodes have been a roller coaster ride. For realsies. From the reveal of CP9 to the development of the Going Merry subplot and the start of Frankie's flashback, we have not stopped for a second. Devastation, elation, fury, confusion, impatience, skepticism. Just play. All from a kid's show? I think from this arc, One Piece has proven effectively that it's not a kid's show. I want to talk about CP9 and how the reveal totally changed the characters that I had begun to adore. Even though I totally called their evilness from the beginning! I think we can see the transformation visualized through their clothing alone. Kaku was a bubbly, cute, honest, and friendly member of the Galley Law Company. After the reveal, his clothes looked exactly like his foreman clothes, except black. 
And I think it's the same with his personality because I don't think he was acting when it came to his Galley Law personality. I think it's his legitimate personality, but it'll just become darker. Khalifa's personality became much more severe. Although she was rather severe to begin with, with her clothing change, it intensified as her clothes became more promiscuous. I don't have much to say about Bruno because I hardly paid attention to him when he wasn't evil, but Lucci. He experienced a dramatic personality change when his true nature, and by extension his true clothing, was revealed. When he first made his appearance several episodes ago, my first impression of him was that based on his appearance he should have been wearing a suit, and now I know why I had that feeling. Once he put on the suit, everything that didn't make sense about him suddenly made so much sense. It was really interesting actually to watch him go from the bizarre background weirdo to the frontman who almost seems like the orchestrator of it all. Was I sad that these characters turned out evil? Yes, quite entirely. Part of this sadness was just having to watch the potential team up with the Mugiwara crew flutter out the window. At least we still have Polly. Poor Polly! He suddenly seemed a lot younger because of it all, didn't he? He had a great conversation with Luffy, which of course Luffy responded perfectly to when they both vowed to rescue Iceberg. I really hope Polly gets to exact his revenge on someone. His situation parallels Luffy's in sort of a foil kind of way, because while he was abandoned by the people he considered Nakama, Luffy is losing a bunch of his. I can see Luffy taking Polly under his wing for the next few episodes, because he's particularly sympathetic to his plight after the whole Usopp incident. I loved it when Polly shouted to CP9, I considered you my Nakama! Luchi responded so cold-heartedly with, Omae dakida. Omae is a form of you, which you use with people you're unfamiliar with and haven't necessarily earned your respect yet. That simple grammar point made the whole statement that much more hurtful. And I suspect that Iceberg suspected that they were evil, at least on a subconscious level. After all, he only trusted Polly enough to tell him about the Pluton weapon. Maybe he was just at least able to tell that Polly was the most genuine. Let's move on though, because there's still a lot to talk about. How about the Going Mary's incarnation? At first, I have to admit, I was like, stupid! I was offended because I was thinking too realistically that that couldn't happen. And then I stopped and wondered why I was calling bullshit on this. After all, in this world, devil fruits exist, swords can have range attacks, and people can jump from building to building without seriously injuring themselves. Okay, an island in the sky can exist, and mermen can exist, but a fairy who fixes beloved ships? That's going too far! So I calmed down and appreciated it for what it was. Adorable. Although I was not pleased with the resolution of Frankie and Usopp's altercation. Because all that was such a big deal, and we barely got an on-screen apology for the whole incident. I'm not saying that I want grudges to be held forever, but I think that there should have been a little more to it than that. But when Usopp reveals that he knew all along that the Going Merry couldn't sail anymore, Frankie brought up an excellent point. If he already knew that, why did he cause such a big ruckus and leave the crew? He knew they had to get a new ship to continue their adventure. I don't think Usopp ever properly responded to this question. I think basically the Going Merry began to represent his place and purpose. The ship burning out probably coincided with Usopp himself burning out when he started to realize that Maybe he was getting in over his head. Maybe Usopp needed a reason to leave the crew that was a better excuse than just saying he was too scared. That's what he thinks, anyway. I can't wait for him to surprise everyone else, including himself. I'm going to hold off on discussing the content of the flashback until I've seen the entirety of it. I just want to quickly mention that they finally updated the commercial break animations! Hooray! Now all the characters have their own animation, and their own music, and then the camera pans down to the various items that define them. It's all I could have asked for and more! So let's change gears again and talk about predictions. Where the hell is Sanji? He's disappeared for episodes at a time before. But it's been literally eight episodes since we've even seen a clip of him walking around. He said he wanted to check something out, but I have no idea what that could be. He hardly spent any time in Water 7 before disappearing, so it's not like he can know something that the others don't. Nami, Chopper, Zoro, and Luffy have all been separated, so that's gonna be 
crazy getting back together. As far as predicting events for the flashback, I have to admit that I made my predictions to an audience and they pretty much confirmed that I was right. So I won't be stating them here because that would just be a spoiler. However, I did take note of the fact that Yokozuna lets the train hit him in the present and what that might mean for past events. That's all I'll say. Awards now. Let's honorably mention Polly, obviously. And best pair is Polly and Iceberg. Just as a heads up, Polly's gonna be winning a lot of these awards. The boss is Tom. Not for anything specific he's done so far, but just because he seems like a boss. Like a boss! The triumphant moment is when the C train finally worked. Although I suspect that moment will be very short-lived. The best burn was Luchi's Omae Dakida. The WTF is actually kind of different. I'm awarding this because I empathize with Polly when he had his reactions when finding out his friends were evil. That look on his face was the epitome of WTF, guys? The best lol was when Frankie wrote a song for Usopp. Twice. The oh snap was the CP9 reveal. I saw it coming, but it still made me fall over. We have two tearjerkers because there were really two storylines going on. One was Polly saying, why was it you guys, as he had flashbacks to all their good times. And the other one was Usopp confessing that he knew Mary was unfixable. The best injury was perhaps unnoticed by most people. Zoro was hit so hard that he dropped his sword. That has to be hard, right? And there wasn't a best fight. Because CP9 versus the Mugiwara crew wasn't a fight. It was a beatdown. However, the best attack was definitely the super poke. I think it was called Shigan. Finally, the MVP. I mean, Mugiwara crew literally did not accomplish anything at all in these episodes. They failed on every front. The only person who didn't fail was Sanji because he wasn't in these episodes at all. I must assume that whatever he's doing is more successful than everything we've seen. So MVP is Sanji. So that's it. I have to stop expecting these reviews to all be less than 10 minutes because so far I think more have been over than under. So that's not going to be on my radar from now on. I hope that's okay. And I'm still holding off on Robin related discussion until we know more. Next up I'll be watching episodes 249 and 250. I expect they'll round out and finish up Frankie's flashback with a bit of content at the end. So I'll see you next time for that. Bye! I can see Luffy taking Polly under his wings of bleh. He had a great conversation with Luffy, which of course Luffy responded perfectly to when they both decided to... no. When I first... when CP9 members have transcended human abilities with Rokushiki... Which, <laughs> that was right, but it's hard to say. Rokushiki. 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 CP9 members have transcended human abilities with Rokushiki... <laughs>